Here we go. Here we go. Another episode of Courtside. Oh, wow. With Beal and Tennis. As always, this week's Courtside with Beal and Tennis segment is brought to you by the Racket Man, the industry leader in racket stringing, racket repair, and customization. Go to www.theragatman.net for more info. The Racket Man. We got Tim bringing us in. You like it? You like it? All right, we good, we good, we good. We lost you guys for a sec. We're right. back, we're back. Wi-Fi, hey, again, the enterprise travels, so sometimes the wi is a little dicey, but we're all good. Okay, let me introduce you. We got DZ coming in. We're going to see, we got Andrew coming in. We're going to see some What's people up, entering. Guys? We got our guest tonight. We know him as Will Comar, Platform Files people. Know him as... Rusty, he's got four other names. Yep. DZ, screaming out, giving you a shout out. Yeah, I'm recording. <laughs> um, why don't you kind of introduce yourself, give 30 well, seconds, maybe your favorite color. Because I'm very nervous. The guy's I, hungry. I, I eat when I'm nervous. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Will Colmar here, uh, working at out of North Shore Country Club. We do platform tennis and tennis during the summer. Um, had a pretty good platform season, and now we're switching over, getting so, rolling out the clay courts. And uh, speaking of clay courts, we, we got some good clay court tennis going on right now. Some Monte Carlo, we'll have some, uh, Madrid, Barcelona coming up, and then of course Roland Garros. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, played a little bit of college ball at Gustavus Adolphus College. Uh, shout out Brett Morse Carson. Shout out Adam Morgan. Um, and, uh, yeah, platform tennis is the future. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's the future only because you have to get old and not do as well at tennis and kind of graduate to things that don't require as much movement. Um, anyway, a uh, little bit of competitive tennis after college, but nothing serious. Zero ATP points. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just a, a lot of ideas about tennis. <laughs> that's that's really where I'm at now. So, well, thank you very much for for joining us. It's always fun to have guests on. Um, Absolutely, it's always good to have the interaction. And as you'll see tonight, you'll have people bringing in comments, um, questions, comments, and we'll try to address those as they come in. So, as we normally do, let's kind of recap because we did this late last week. So, let's kind of recap. We had Houston Clay Courts. We, as I called it last week. Kalamazoo for grown-ups, right? Mm -hmm. We had 15 of the 28 player draw consist of Americans. We were talking prior to this, to our segment tonight, like, do we even call that the start of the clay court season before the players go over to Europe? Ah, yeah, debatable. No, I, I think you have to. It's, it's, a, it's a good tournament. The level of play was reasonably high. Um, I, I know for you American clay court tennis. Yeah, for, for American clay court tennis. I, I actually think Americans have gotten better on clay uh, recently. And then I, I, I'd seen a note that you had written uh, talking about some players' training habits. And we know Jared Donaldson went over and trained a bunch on clay courts to improve his uh, strategic um, kind of knowledge of, of, of point construction. And, and we've seen other American tennis players do that. I think it's a great idea. Um, I know the USTA for a long time was talking about turning more of the hard courts into clay courts just because that's how Spain and France had produced so many pros right. in, in the recent years with a uh, very high degree of point construction right. um, out of the juniors on clay courts. So just a few <laughs> who wins a two-handed backhand cross-court battle. Roger Federer, who has the one-hander or Jack Sock. I think we're taking we're taking we're going to talk about. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're getting there. We're getting we were there. AK. Okay. About that earlier. Yeah, we're going to get there. So just let's wrap up a little bit. Houston Clay Courts, quick. Stevie Johnson. Hey, congrats to Stevie. Yeah. Good win. He's getting married this weekend. He can now pay a little extra for dessert, I guess. For the guests, a couple more guests he can invite. I didn't get the invite. I don't think you got the invite. Uh, no, but I'm still waiting. Okay, so we got a couple days. So congrats to Stevie. And then our, our, our guy, he's my guy. He writes the, he practically writes the segment for me every week. The guy has yet to win back-to-back -back matches this year. Yeah. Couldn't do it in Houston. Couldn't do it in Houston. What's, uh, everyone knows my take on him, and they know mm -hmm. I support him, but he's also getting extremely difficult to keep supporting him when uh, – We've yeah, seen what he's done over the years, so I'm going to let you kind of go off on him. Luster results, yeah. Um, I, it's it's hard to rag on a guy who's gotten into the top ten. I, I I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. And when I saw Jack Sock come on the scene, 
I didn't think he would have what it takes to crack the top ten. So he's already proved me wrong there. Um, I think he's got he's got a a very big game. It's what I would call maybe unsustainably big. Um, I it, it's something he may be able to grow into. He's got to become a little bit better, I guess, probably a, of a spot server, and definitely have more in terms of a consistent return that that at least keeps him closer to neutral at the beginning of of return game points. But, but you know, he's got. I mean, without a doubt, I think one of the three biggest forehands on the tour. Uh, he, he's won a grand slam and doubles with his forehand. Which I thought was impressive. I watched a lot of that Wimbledon that he ended up winning. I said previously, double and suits this guy's game. Well, and, and it's just it's just such a massive weapon that that it can really it can keep him up there with with the top ten players. But um, it's about sustainability for him. And and I know we were talking a little bit earlier about um, some of the things that entails. And for him, a huge obstacle is going to be uh, if he can get himself into a mental frame that he can reproduce in, in consistent events. Meaning, uh, you look at the, the, the greatest competitor in the game, and that's Nadal, in my opinion, uh, who fights and plays every single point like it's match point. Jack Sock has not had that mentality consistent enough. I know when McEnroe yelled at him uh, some time ago in the Davis Cup match. Labor Cup. It, Labor, uh, Labor Cup, Cup yeah. um, it, it kind of sparked something. But he needs to do that consistently and make habits out of it. And this is for all of you juniors out there. Um, this is the discipline end of tennis. Uh, it's not just how physical you are, how much you want it, but how much you can control yourself and get yourself into a mind frame that will allow you to produce your best tennis. And, and Jack Sock has a lot of work to do to get into that, that mind frame. No, that's that's really good and, and really spot on on point. I want to give a shout out Gina Campanile. She's the daughter of the Racket Man, Mark Campanile, and Gina has her new band out called Palace. They just released their first single. Nice. So check them out. Tell your buddies about Palace. it. Palace. Yeah, there's going to be another single coming out later this summer. She's great. Check her out on social media. She does some covers that we all know. Cool. Talented. Well, we got to have her, you know, start it off the next segment. We right? dude, oh, you're giving away secrets. Yeah. You are giving away secrets, man, with, that may be in the works very, very soon. Connecting the dots. Yep, yep. You, you can't give away all the secrets, but that may be very well in the works. So thanks again for, for um, supporting this program, Gina, and best of luck to you and, and Zach and, and Palace. Okay, Houston's done. It's in the past. Yeah. Now we're going over to Europe. Now the real work starts, right? We got Monte Carlo, and as far as Monte Carlo goes, as far as Americans go, you mentioned him before, um, Jared Donaldson. A lot of people have high hopes for him. Yeah. Now he he played the 15th seed in the first round. Ramos from Nolas, okay, very good clay quarter. Right. He beat up on Jared pretty well. It's okay. Jared's yeah. first tournament there. Yeah. That's not a bad loss. But <clears throat> Jared went crazy. Uncharacteristic of Jared. He, got a he was hot. down a set. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, got a little hot. It was a bad call by the umpire. Okay, yeah. say what you want. It was a bad call. However, ease up, guy. Ease up on the Johnny yeah. Mac. I mean, and, I mean, he went chest to chest with him. Yeah, a little overdose of the uh, craziness there. Yeah, I, I wonder who wins that fight too. I mean, <laughs> like, you think the? I mean, I, I actually think the ump. He's got a little something in him, but Jared Donaldson, to me, is, never struck me as the type of guy who had that kind of fire in him. Uh, I know he's a competitor. In order to get to that level of the game, you got to be a competitor. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of impressed because I didn't think he had that in him. Uh, and it wasn't so violent that, that I, I'm like, oh, you know what, he's a bad sportsman. I think he, if you watch it, and I watched it a few times, he kind of catches himself as he starts to feel like he's pushing the limit and then backs down a little bit and goes and takes a seat. I don't know if it was the best way to handle it. Uh, heat of the moment, I know he wanted to probably perform better than he did, but yeah, Jared, don't do that. Uh, and, and, and I think he's learned his lesson. David says it was the same ump who got drilled in the eye by Chapo 
Wow. No. Wow. I did not know uh, that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? Miguel, no, Miguel, no chance. The legend of Billy <laughs> Hey, what's up, Miggy, Miguel? Miggy. Uh, hey, shout out to my dad. Nice. My dad hey, what's up, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> so, um... um all right, let's do a couple. Let's yeah, that, do a that's couple. That's pretty crazy, though. That so he's that. Yeah, he is battle tested. That um, that's, that's a, a crazy point. stat, David. That we did yeah. not know that. Thanks for contributing that. That's a that's a fact that was unknown to me. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe he wasn't seeing it right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a little dark. That was a little dark. We're trying to keep it light here, folks. <laughs> okay, a couple quick hitters. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. A couple quick hitters. First round match. Thomas Burdick lost to Kanish Corey. Former top 10 matchup in the first round. I mean, I, I'm kind of lukewarm on both those guys. I think their best ball is, is behind them. Your, yeah. your quick thoughts on that. Anything? All right, let's just go to the next Move one. Move on. <laughs> Two 19-year-olds. I'm right with you. Uh, yeah, Two 19-year-olds. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. It's the, nec tough. the next cool matchup was, and gosh, I was so worried about mispronouncing this name. We had to do some research. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it. Stefanos. Titi pass? Is yeah, that close that's enough? It, that's it. Soft S's. Soft S's. He beat Dennis Shabavala. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those two guys are going to be playing for years to come, I think. Yeah. And um, Dennis, I, obviously disappointing for Dennis because Dennis is obviously his rank is at a level higher than him, yep. than his opponent. But Stefanos is good. They're yes, going to be playing for absolutely. years to come. Um, I. <sighs> My first impression of both of those guys was was I love uh, Shapovalov's game a lot more. I, I like Tsitsipas. I think he's got I think he's got a lot of potential. But when I, just watching, you know, looking back on that uh, Rogers Cup performance from uh, from Shapovalov last year, <laughs> man, I mean that was a, a degree of tennis that for an eighteen year old, I mean it was. That was incredible. I mean, the highest level tennis that I've ever seen an 18-year-old play, uh, without a doubt. And and I was I my I've been a little bit disappointed with his results, but he is he's in the learning process right now, right? And he's headfirst into that. So I don't think these losses for him are going to be a career changer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just kind of looking forward to the results. Yeah, no, I'm I'm spot on. Agree with you a hundred percent on that. And he's they they both got some big games, and we'll yeah. be hearing plenty from both those dudes. Yeah. Okay, my guy, outside of Rafa on clay, a guy mm -hmm. that I, I'm a huge huge fan of, had an extremely tough first round, but got through it. Dominique Team, yeah, just barely got through mm -hmm. Andre Rublev. Rublev served for the match, 5-4 in the third. Rublev had a match point. Obviously, something different with tennis is other sports. There's no clock, right? You have to win that last point. Right. And uh, Rublev couldn't do it. Team took advantage. I love Dominic Team. I mean, I, and I know he's really good on clay. He's better on clay than some other surfaces. But he had an amazing match with Juan Martin Del Potro in the U.S. Open last year when Del Potro looked sick for two sets. Then I don't know what... He took it a changeover. He woke up from the dead and took him out, took team out in five. Yeah. But team for me, he he's the guy, man. He is the guy. I, this guy's got majors in him. On clay, <laughs> I, 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 th I think his best chance is on clay. Um, he, he's a good grass court player. He's a, he's a good hardcore player. Clay suits his game absolutely the best. Massive second serve. I mean, he can really he can push players very far back behind the baseline unless they're really willing to step up into it uh, with the second serve. So I, I, it, it suits his game. I don't know, though, in terms of his mental state, where he's at. Because I, when I watched him, uh, watch him at the Australian, watch him in some of these other tournaments, you see him getting very irritated very quick. Uh, I, I didn't notice that about him earlier in his career and it looks like he as of late has been getting more and more frustrated I'm not sure exactly what that is maybe it's something that they've been working on in his coaching camp maybe it's something physical but I have noticed that about team is that that he's been getting a little hot-headed uh kind of earlier in matches and and I'm I, I don't know what it is. Uh, well, but we that, got, we're going to have an interesting me. one tomorrow. Yeah. We have an interesting contest tomorrow. We're going to get to that in a sec. So, Novak Djokovic. Yeah. I mean, Novak. you saw you saw him play at a at a really bad level in Indian Wells in Miami. 
Yeah. And he easily won his first round of Monte Carlo. Had a tough one today against a good player. We both discussed him a little bit before the segment. Born at George. George is good. Yeah. And he's yeah. gonna he's gonna have a heck of a future. He's already yeah. had a really good year. Novak got through that, and sometimes you need that tough one. Took now, him, I think, ten match points. It took him ten match, ten points, match points. Yes. Yeah. So Novak now beat him. Now, when we talk about the draw, my gosh, it's like who the heck did did Novak piss off? Yeah. He has to beat Chorich, which he did. He plays team tomorrow, yep. and if he's fortunate enough to get through team, he plays your boy Rafa. Yeah. Yep. So I'm already getting comments. The team is going to get destroyed by Novak tomorrow. Um, three and four, Komarov says. I don't know, boys. Yeah, uh, Novak. Let's not get crazy about Novak. I know he's with his old, his original coach now, Marion Vita. He's had one good match, two good matches. First round was easy, but um, tomorrow's. I, I don't know how tomorrow's going to go. Honestly, I, I can't predict that one. I don't know. You, like, Novak's one of those guys that's hard to forecast, and especially now where he, you know, he's kind of. In this comeback stage, I really, I, I think this could be the potential start of his comeback where yeah. things start to click a little bit. But I've seen, I watched a little bit of his matches on clay uh, this year, and he, he's, he doesn't look perfectly balanced yet. And he does that thing where he, he did this a lot on grass too, where he's like doing the slip and slide thing and he looks down at his feet. Right. And they're, they're just like doing weird Scooby Doo type <laughs> maneuvers, and you're like, what, what, what what's going on there? Uh, and to me, some of that's like when you're irritated and you just kind of need an excuse yep. for not doing something properly. I mean, I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, even in his own good one. That's <laughs> a, uh, that, that gets into the PG-13 rated R territory. <laughs> but but yeah, um, I think he, uh, I think he he is getting there and and I think the coaching change back to Marion Vita is very important for him uh because now he's starting to feel some of those old feelings that that propelled him into right. great to greatness yeah um so make the call dude who's winning tomorrow if gun to my head I'm going to go with team I'm but, going with team in three sets but, but but I don't like that I don't feel comfortable with it and and I really I really think it could be Djokovic um I'm really on the fence on this one I I yeah, it's I, I actually kind of hope it is Djokovic just for the yeah, sake yeah. of so we're getting him back. I agree. Yeah. We need him back. I'm hoping for Djokovic um, too. I think I think team wins tomorrow in three sets. Yeah. Um before we end with Novak, I asked this question a couple weeks ago. I apologize. I don't remember. You may have added to it, but mm -hmm. for our viewers, you can say it again. You know, what comes earlier? Fed retirement or another Novak Slam title? Yeah. Um, another tough one. We, we don't give easy ones here. We don't give softballs on a court side. Yeah, well, you know, I this got hard what it balls. Is, man. I mean, uh, right. you know, like, I, I'll throw some hard balls back at you. Wait, this is coming off really weird. Let's go, this man. Weird Answer weird the second. question. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the... Uh, I'm going to go with the, the Djokovic slams. Uh, and and I, I did say plural slams. Um, slams. Because I, I, I think Federer, the way that he's been outlining his schedule, is I think he's looking at another three to five years. Wow. I really do. I do. Uh, the, 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 yeah. I know. I think he'll, I think he'll play... He'll be 40 I think he'll be right? 40, 42 and he's, five years. Because he's 37, right? He's 37. Um, so I, I, I could go him, I could see him playing for another three to five years. That's the, the way that he does his schedule and with the stipulations that the ATP has in place for him playing tournaments. Right. And, at and the age 30 and his right. rating. And how so right. he, I, he can afford to skip a bunch of tournaments. Absolutely. And, and for me, uh, I think if he was going to retire, he'd have done it by now. He's, he's trying to stretch this thing as long as it goes. That's my gut. Oh, feeling. Absolutely. Uh, and I think I think that's. I just you know, I just think though if he's he's going to stretch as long as he goes as he plays at his highest level. I mean he's not going to go to five six seven eight nine in the world and still play. He's. he's uh, no, I I think he retires at like seven or eight. I, I don't think he's in the top five when he retires because I think he's he he just doesn't know when that that light's going to go out and and it's. 
the, with the way his points are going to be distributed, right. it's going to be hard for him to hold on to those. Right, but it's, but it, but personally, he wants to be oh, playing yeah. at its highest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and Peter Barker, yeah, I love. We're loving the comments coming in. Yes, team beat Djokovic at the French last year. He beat him in straights, I believe. Um, Djokovic, there was clearly something off. At yeah, that time, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, team team is team is good. I'm a huge huge fan. David code and he definitely can play three or five, three to five more years. The question is, does he want to? Yeah, I think I think everyone here is in agreement that if he's still playing at a high level, he's going to play as long as he can, yeah. as long as he's healthy yeah. and he he schedules like he's doing um, with a long term view. And, and, and I'll I'll tell you something that I don't I don't know how much the majors mean to him and and how much all of the prestigious. He certainly downplays it a little bit in his press conferences, but I I think we know better than that kind of. With the passion that you see him playing with, and, and some of the the really tough losses that he's had, and, and how he has worn some of that on his sleeve, um, I, I really think there there is something to his legacy that that he looks at, and in the back of his mind, he he knows that I mean Nadal really still isn't that far away major wise. I, I the health thing for Nadal is. It, it it's almost certain in my mind that Nadal won't catch him in terms right. of majors, but it's not impossible either. No, I mean if you look at at the length and maybe he, maybe Nadal you know takes a year off, gets a couple more on the back end, and when Federer is not there, goes and wins two more Roland Garros and a, a, a you know a couple other majors. But, yeah, uh, but the big thing with Rafa though again is is health. With him health, too. and but th- then there's also Djokovic. And getting back to the question. The reason why I go with Djokovic before Federer retires is because let's assume Federer plays for two more years. If that, well, two. If you, if we agree that Fed goes three, five years, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm going Novak. Slam. Yeah. But two, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go even more on a limb and say that we see see Djokovic within the next five majors. So going. Yep. Uh, from, French, this French. from this French up through next Wimbledon, yep. we'll see him win one of those five. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason why I say that is uh, it, it's very hard to forecast him, but we've seen, in my opinion, the single greatest season of, of tennis in 2015 with Djokovic uh, going 82-6, and six, dominating everybody at the majors. Including um, the great ones. I, I, yes. Including the great ones when they were playing arguably their highest level of tennis yeah. so uh, it's that's tennis needs them needs them yeah. back so yep. yeah we're all hoping for it yeah okay so we got it yeah that's a monster match tomorrow that everyone's going to be tuned in on with between team and joker and then the winner of that yeah there's a guy named rafa that'll probably be waiting yeah, for him man. so it's such it's such good well, stuff he beat up that guy al yaz smoked uh, him smoked him just but he beat Sa- he, he beat the you know what out of sasha Oh, Davis yeah. Cup the yep. week before, and he yeah. hadn't played since when? Yeah. Australia? The guy is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting play. to get all crazy hypotheticals about the French with Rafa, including from our, our good friend Mike Marino. We're not going to talk about it here. We're going we're gonna to pose it closer. You hungry? Yeah. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to pose the question <laughs> closer to the French, but we're getting all crazy hypotheticals with you take the field versus Rafa, there's odd... All these crazy questions, we'll, we'll pose those as it gets closer. All right, we've been going around 25 oh. minutes. If They fly by. Uh, Komarov, he keeps asking no, this question. No. You ready? The Fed, Fed has the one-hander, obviously. He wants to know the Fed sock two-hander. Who wins in a baseline game, a Fed two-hander versus sock two-hander? You need to do this. You need to do this. <laughs> Go. I think you can find it on YouTube. Federer hitting a two-handed backhand. It's pretty good. It's one of the most embarrassing things I have ever seen that guy do. Bad? Insanely bad. Like I think it was a one-hopper into the net. It looked like he had broken wrists when he hit the ball. I, I've never seen anything like it. So you're going sock with the low-level well, D1 it, it, level. It, it, like, if we're being absolutely real, it's not even a question. Sock. Okay. But, like, Federer's two-hander, you, you, have to, you have to check out Federer's two you can YouTube it. It's on there. It's the reason why he has a one-handed back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it There's with that. There's a reason for it. Yeah. Okay. What we wanted to end with, and uh, obviously we're doing this in America. We like to see the American uh, men's players do well. That's. We talked about Jared Donaldson. We we both are in agreement that he's 
you know, the guy, he's, he's going things about, he's doing everything the right way. Yeah. I mean, he trained in Argentina mm -hmm. for a while. He's seeking out the right people, even with his coach, with Jan Mike by, him side, by mm -hmm. his side. Who else? I mean, uh, throw it, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Is it, is it TFO? Is it, it, it could be one of the more experienced guys. Is it Query? Is it Isner? I mean, John finally, finally did something with his return game yeah. in Miami. Yeah. But, impressive. you know, Clay is not his best surface. So. Yeah. I, who, I, who, you, who, who are you looking to see make some inroads, if any? I mean, this could be really short. You can say no one and we can yeah. end it. The Americans, uh, the Americans is is kind of tough. Um, I do. I like I like TFO for a lot of reasons. I mean, he has another gigantic game. Uh, for me, a lot of that for him is conditioning. And, and the other thing I'd like to see him do, which I you know I I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of this kind of rope a dope thing where if I were playing him and I was seeing him walk around the way he does, I'd be kind of pumped. But but maybe I would maybe I would misinterpret that too because you do see him play pretty darn tough and it, it looks like he does cool down between the points but um if he in my opinion displayed just a little bit more fight and and kind of had this more physical stamina endurance type presence I think that would go a long way for him and 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 just with the type of game that he plays we've seen him take some really great players to the distance and 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 that's uh he's got the potential for sure um you know I, there there's other weird stuff with the with the Americans they're some of these kind of late risers like this guy you know tennis Sangren right. who's now reached his career high he's inside the top 50 actually right um I'm not I'm not completely I'm, I'm sold not, on him I'm not big on him either but I will tell you this I, I watched him at Winnetka and I thought to myself man that guy moves like crazy. He's he he has at times a gigantic forehand. He's got a very stable backhand. The way he moves on the court is it, it, it's it's world class movement. He's got a good enough serve and a reasonable return. Um, I don't know. His name is Tennis. Yeah, <laughs> like, he went to Tennessee too. Right? Yeah, uh, it may, maybe something that was in the cards for him to break the top fifty. I, I would have told you the way that he was sulking around the court was very, in my opinion, almost embarrassing. But maybe he was just ticked off that he uh, had to play a level tournament like that and, right, and right, deal right. with some nonsense that happens at the challenger level. <laughs> I don't know. Um, who else are you like? Who else for the Americans do you see is making an inroads? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, other than Jared, are we are we so, well, all What in about Jared? Taylor Fritz? I don't know. I mean, I, I, here's <laughs> what I want to say. Fritz, here's man. what I want to say about Donaldson before yeah. we talk about Fritz. We're not. We don't. We don't know how well he's going to do, but he is trying to do everything to put himself in the best possible position to succeed. And there are other Americans. That are not doing that. Yeah. Jared's putting forth the effort. He's develop trying to develop his game. Michael Mo, he's got a little ways <laughs> to go. Hey, he's got a little ways Mo, to go. Mo made some good moves though. He and did. I'll tell you who no, else he made did. big jump. I'll tell but, you who else but he's did. not uh, in a second. Finish your thought about about Donaldson, but but I'm gonna write this so I don't forget. This is what I like about Jared. He's trying to do everything he can to put himself in the best position to succeed. Not everyone's not every other American is, is doing that. And some of these Americans I'm talking about are, yeah. are highly ranked. Um, I saw the names you, you yeah. just jotted down, and I'm a big fan. He, he mentioned, Will mentioned the name of Kenzie McDonald, and yeah. we've talked about him on this segment before. He took Grigor, I think 7-5 or 8-6 in the fifth in Australia. Yes. He yeah. went, I think, then to the finals of the Challenger. He may have lost to K in Dallas like shortly after. He was on a hot streak. The, the, this is another dude, and in, in, it's hard to... To know with a guy that's kind of floating around in that part of the ranking system what's going to happen just because right. there is so much going on in the challenger level tournaments. It's, you're getting guys that are passing through to the top you know, 50. You're getting guys from the top 50 that are dropping oh, yeah. down. <laughs> You're getting flooded with a lot of. It's real, a horrendous it, it, it's, cycle. It, it's really tough. Even the futures level, it, it, you can get a lot of really wicked, wicked draws and kind of get stuffed there for a period of time unless you get the right ones and. And then you have to, of course, take, you know, take, you advantage, take advantage of the opportunities that you get. But um, Mackenzie McDonald's been very stable in, in that range and has now started to produce a few of those kind of 
meaningful uh, kind of events in, in his career. So he took Grigor. He took Grigor to the absolute brink. That, that's a kid. Now Grigor has had some kind of up and down fluctuation this year, but but McKenzie, in my opinion, he, he's one of those guys that I could see actually breaking into the top, you know, seventy five or yeah. something, and then you know you might see his name at the slam, something like that, uh, or some other slams. But um, yeah, he's he's got some potential. So keep an uh, eye. He's kind of he's kind of my dark horse, I would say. All right. Um, yeah, Taylor Fritz, real quick. Yeah, Fritz, what? Mm, mm, no, mm. I, I'm not. I'm not sold on him <laughs> yet. He Fritz has a lot of stuff to do to to gain my confidence, and and the first thing is, um, in my opinion, just getting physically a little bit stronger. The the type of style that he plays needs to be. He's got a good serve. It's got to get a little bit more weight on it, especially his second serve. Um, and then I think he's got to. I think he's got to develop out his forehand just a little bit more, and and play a more Isnerish type game where he goes for a big forehand and doesn't try to beat people with with ground stroke rallies. Right. I don't think he'll ever be a great uh, kind of. Counter puncher, baseliner. I think no, he's got. I, to, I think he's got, he's got to go develop out. I mean, maybe even a little bit of the serving volley for that kid. But yeah, so um, you, the one thing that he's got going for him right now, um, he recently added Paul Anacone to his team, and yeah, Paul, he's yeah. Paul has some credibility working with Pistol Pete, yeah, absolutely. And, and Rogers, you know, so. I I see again, some similarities he's, there, he's but doing, not enough. He again, yeah. another American trying to to do the right thing, and that's all we can ask for. As long as we see them working on their game, developing their games, surrounding themselves with the good people, and hopefully we have a bunch now that that one or two can pop. That's yeah. what we can hope for. You know, they're not all going to pop, but hopefully we can get one or two. They're starting. It's not the consistent results that we want, but we're starting to get one or two of them go later in some of these bigger tournaments. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, There's some hope. Here's hoping, man. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. This has been awesome. Will, thanks again. Um, for joining on this, we all know him on the platform files as Rusty. Right on Facebook, he goes by some other name that I don't even know. But this was fun. He's still eating his pizza, guys. I'm sorry thanks for tuning in. I know we had to do it a day early. Appreciate it, Tim, leading us out. You good? Yeah. <laughs> good night, everybody. Hey.